Hello, I'm Deputy Melvin Joyner. With me today is Deputy Brian Connor, and we're going to tell you about the many opportunities we have to offer at the Wichita County Sheriff's Office. As we start our PowerPoint presentation, you'll be able to see some of the many different divisions within the Sheriff's Office as well. So we hope you find this very informative, and we hope that you uh, uh, will learn a lot of information about the Sheriff's Office that maybe you didn't know previously. First of all, the Sheriff, uh, which is uh, David Duke, he is elected by the citizens of Wichita County every four years. Uh, that's the difference between a Sheriff's Office and a Sheriff's Department. A Sheriff's Office means that the Sheriff is elected by the citizens. The Sheriff's Department means that the Sheriff is elected by the County Commissioners. Uh, we'll first start talking about the Patrol Divisions. That's one of the most visible divisions of the Sheriff's Office that you will see. Uh, they make arrests, they respond to calls, they conduct patrol checks. Uh, like I say, it's the face of the Sheriff's Office. Our Special Response Unit is a high-risk search. They serve high-risk search warrants, barricaded subjects, hostage scenarios, and special evacuations. A lot of people call it SWAT teams. We call our Special Response Unit. Uh, they go out on a lot of calls, believe it or not, especially with high-risk warrants that we serve. Our next division, uh, we'll continue showing some footage of these. These are going out. Some of the vehicles that the, the Special Response Unit use, uh, we have Humvees. Uh, the large vehicle uh, on the right there is called uh, uh, MRAP. The MRAP is used for several purposes. We can transport its 24 and a half tons, uh, fully armored. We can transport our uh, SRU members to and from where they need to go, especially if they're having to approach a house or a barricaded person. Uh, that we also use it for high water rescue. Uh, we get a lot of rains in some areas of the county. We have a lot of flooding, so that thing can go in some very high water. The bottom right is a uh, LAV, uh, light armored vehicle. Uh, we use it as well with the SRU. Uh, we also have canine interdiction unit. Uh, Wichita County Sheriff's Office has three canine officers. Uh, the dogs named Tip, Kane, and Abel. They, uh, they are used on regular traffic stops, or they may be called out if someone believes there may be drugs in a vehicle. One of the deputies may stop a, a vehicle and feel like there may be drugs in it. They also assist officers with drug interdiction. Uh, they can also stop fleeing subjects. Uh, it's kind of hard to outrun a, a big ball of fire coming at you, and those dogs can run. So we're very proud of our canine. Our criminal investigation division, uh, they investigate and solve the criminal cases filed by Wichita County deputies. Uh, they also do arson investigation out in the county. Uh, the city has a fire department, they have arson investigators, and they do all the arson investigation within the city of Wichita Falls. However, out in the county, uh, the sheriff's office does that for them. We have, these guys have been specially trained in arson investigation, so they go out and find out what the cause of the fire was. For, they also covered Burke, Iowa Park, Electra, Cam A, uh, Cashin, Pleasant Valley and all areas in the unincorporated uh, parts of the county. Uh, criminal investigators, they also interview witnesses and suspects. They ensure cases are properly presented to the district attorney's office properly. Uh, you'll see them out. They ensure that all records are filed correctly. They collect uh, our records and ID section. Uh, some of them call them CSI. You can, how many of you like CSI on TV? Well, that's what these guys do. They uh, collect photographs and log all evidence. They ensure chain of custody is maintained. Uh, they maintain warrant files, just a variety of things that they do. Uh, the civil division is another division that's a little different. They serve all the legal paperwork issued by the courts, whether it be a divorce, eviction, subpoena. They seize property with court order. They serve mental health warrants. They also sometimes have the unpleasant task of removing children from hostile environments with court orders. And then we cover courthouse security. I think Deputy Connor wants to cover some of that. Good morning, I'm Deputy Connor. Uh, if anybody's ever been to an airport, then they've probably seen some of the same type of equipment that we have at the courthouse because we have to provide the same security uh, for all the people in the courthouse, whether it be in the courtrooms or the attorney's office or any, anybody that's just coming to take care of regular business, the sheriff's office is actually tasked with uh, keeping everybody safe there. So we have x-ray machines as well as metal detectors. 
Um, our courthouse security staff, they patrol the courtrooms and halls, and then they also make arrests inside the courtroom, uh, courtrooms or courthouse. So if somebody starts a fight in one of the halls or something like that, then they'll actually go uh, and you know put handcuffs on them and actually take them to jail as well. Then we have one of the most the busiest uh, divisions we have, and that's the transport division. These are the men and women that actually take inmates to court, take them to all their legal attorney appointments, um, take them to any doctor's appointments that they may have to leave the, the confinement of the jail for, um, any kind of specialized uh, doctor that we can't bring into the, the jail, they'll actually have to take them there and keep them secure the whole time. But they also work inside the courtrooms as well. And they also patrol along uh, the, the courthouse um, hallways and things like that while they're escorting their prisoners. So they also provide extra courtroom uh, security if we have a lot of people inside watching a trial or something like that. Then we have the largest division in the sheriff's office and that's actually where I started as well as Sheriff Duke started and that's the detention division. That's working in the jail with uh, keeping the incarcerated inmates of Wichita County, keeping them safe and secure, making sure they, they uh, get all the rights they're afforded while they're also maintaining their secure uh, posture in, in the jail. They conduct inmate and cell searches, which is what we call shakedowns inside the, inside the jail cells, looking for any types of contraband, whether it be drugs, alcohol, uh, homemade weapons, or anything like that that could have been snuck into the jail. They, they have to stay real diligent and uh, make sure that no one else can get hurt because while someone's locked up into the county jail, we're actually responsible for their safety. No matter what they've done out in the free world, we have to make sure that they stay safe while in our custody. They also receive custody uh, from the arresting officer out on the street. So if anybody's arrested in Wichita County, they're actually brought to uh, Wichita County Jail, whether or not they're arrested in Electra, Howell Park, Burt Burnett, or uh, out in the county, then all the prisoners are brought to us if they're going to be staying more than a day or two, anywhere that the city jails can't handle. Um, we will also take prisoners from game wardens, uh, Texas State Troopers, uh, Federal prisoners will come and stay with us if uh, they're being transferred between federal facilities and they need a layover for the night, they'll actually come and bring uh, inmates off for us. So U.S. Marshals, FBI, stuff like that. So we get a wide range of all types of prisoners and, and it's a good, exciting job. And then we have the division that uh, Deputy Joyner and I are in and that's the Community Service Division. We actually connect the community with the Sheriff's Office. We're actually we put on uh, citizens academies, which we invite citizens to come in to show them all aspects of the sheriff's office, kind of like we're doing now, but it's a 14 week program that they come once a night and actually get to drive patrol cars, uh, learn patrol tactics and learn why deputies do things out on the street and have a lot of those questions that they may have. Because if you're sitting at home watching an episode of Cops or something, you think, why did that officer do that, you know? And so those are the types of questions we get to answer in the citizens academy. We also hold, uh, we do public information. So that includes all the media resources like the news or newspapers. Um, we also do social media. So that's another way that's real good for us to connect with the community and push out any kind of information, uh, public information that we need to real quickly. We also do recruiting. So if anyone's looking for a job, then they contact us and we get them all the information on how to apply and then get them into the process of uh, getting a job at the sheriff's office. Then we also run a chaplain's program. These are men and women are actually uh, licensed or ordained ministers that come with us out onto uh, death notifications or any kind of notification that might be hard for the family and they might need a little bit of counseling. We'll, we'll actually take a, a minister with us just in case they want to talk to somebody. And then the training division, we were talking about people, how they come to work at the sheriff's office. Well, they have to get all sorts of training before they're actually allowed to go work inside either the jail or out on the streets. And the, the officers that maintain our training files and there's a lot of training they have to go to. It's not a quick and easy process. That's the training division. They make sure all the officers uh, license state current and make sure we you know, keep up with our continuing education. Anything that's put out by the state that is mandated training for us. And then they also run our jailer academy. So if you want to be a jailer with us, then you can actually come in with no experience necessary and go through our in-house jailer academy and you'll get all the training you need. Then we have an art honor guard. This is a ceremonial uh, unit for the sheriff's office. We do numerous events every year. Uh, we do officer and official funerals. So if there's an officer uh, killed in line of duty or just dies uh, while serving as a police officer, the family can, uh, contacts us and wants us to do like a folded flag or something like that. We'll actually go and perform a funeral service for them, free, free to them, and it's an all-volunteer unit. 
We also do an officer memorial every year that honors all the fallen officers that have been killed in the line of duty that year and all the previous years. So you're asking yourself, how do I get into law enforcement? Criminal justice sounds really interesting. Maybe not the law enforcement side of it, but uh, whether it's working in jail or maybe uh, corrections or, or something like that. Well, to work as a patrol deputy, you have to be at least 21 years of age. Um, you have to be 18 years old to become a jailer. So that, that jailer uh, job can actually be a stepping stone into a different form of criminal justice or law enforcement. You have to have a clean background and no misdemeanors in the past 10 years and no felonies ever. Have at least a high school education and some larger agencies like Dallas or Fort Worth or state troopers actually require college education. So education is always important. But the most important thing to remember is make good decisions now. Because if you do one little thing that you might think is little and you end up with a class B misdemeanor or something like that, uh, well, now that kind of shuts your, a lot of doors for you for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, so just make good decisions and make sure you're in doing what you're supposed to right now because you never know how it's going to set you up later in life. Uh, now we can open it up to questions if there's anybody. Um, one, of the, one of the questions was, what type of education and training is needed to enter the career field? Well, like I said, you have to have at least a high school diploma. Some agencies require you to have a, a college degree or at least some college credits. They don't really, it doesn't matter what um, area that is. I will say that if you want to get into the FBI, like I always talk to people and they say, oh, I want to go FBI. Well, FBI, they handle mo mostly financial crimes. And so if you get an accounting degree, um, then you're actually a lot more likely to get a job at the FBI than you are if you were to get a criminal justice degree. But I have a degree in criminal justice from Midwestern State. Um, it really helped me along the lines of what, uh, you know, how the criminal justice field works and, and a lot of understanding on how the laws are written and things like that. But it doesn't really matter as long as you go and get the, train, the education. Um, as far as training, you'll learn all you need to know in the Peace Officer Academy or the Jailer Academy on actually how to perform the job. So that's a good question. What's the worst and best part of your career? Uh, the best part of my career is definitely helping people. Um, the worst part of my career is uh, seeing some of the situations that people need a lot of help in. Um, car wrecks are always bad. You know, you never know what you're going to roll up on whenever you pull up to a car wreck, whether or not, you know, you're going to see, you know, people injured or, or anything like that. So those are always kind of bad. But the best part is, you know, reuniting a, a mother who's lost her child, you know, at the park or something like that. And so we go and do a search for a child and, and you know, finding that child and then reuniting with the parents. That's always good. It's, it feels good to help people and bring a smile for sure. Uh, how long do I have to go to a college to become a sheriff? Um, you actually don't have to go to college to become a sheriff. Like I said, you just go get your high school diploma, graduate from high school and then apply at the sheriff's office uh, and you can start in the jail right away at 18. Um, to, be, uh, to be a patrol deputy, you have to be 21 and then you also have to go through a, a, the Peace Officer Academy to become a licensed peace officer. So, uh, Entry level wages in this field, it varies. Larger cities, they obviously have a lot more tax base. So everything is funded off of uh, public taxes. So Dallas, Fort Worth, they pay a more than Alba Park does because population wise, you know, um, it's good and bad. You get paid more working for Dallas Police Department than at Alba Park Police Department, but you have to put up with a whole different world of problems. Um, it, it really, so I mean, really it depends on whether if you're, you know, you kind of like the small town feel or something like that, then you want to stay local, then one of those agencies would be better. If you want to go and, and do all the things and, and see all the things in, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, larger cities, are, is that, that's where they offer that kind of stuff. Can the sheriff be a girl? The sheriff can be a girl. The sheriff is actually elected every four years uh, on, the same pres on the same election cycle as the president. So, um, you know, a, there, uh, in Archer County, there was uh, Sheriff uh, Stacy Beesinger. She was sheriff for a long time down there and she just recently retired. So uh, the sheriff can be a girl, the sheriff can be anybody. Um, you just, you know, work hard, work your way up through the ranks. And, and then once you get enough experience, you put your name on a, a ballot and say, you know, vote for me and hopefully you get votes. I mean, we'll show you a little bit of equipment here. Um, this is our pretty much day-to-day -day patrol body armor. It's pretty light. You know, I can hold it up with one arm. It weighs maybe 
10 pounds. Um, it's a soft top body armor that we wear on patrol. Um, not, doesn't offer a whole lot of protection, but it's better than just a t-shirt. So, and then our SWAT team, I'm actually on the SWAT team. Uh, we wear a little bit different uh, body armor. Uh, this body armor weighs about 45 pounds and offers a whole lot more protection. It has actual hard plates in it, which protects from rifles and pistols. Um, so if you see anybody toting this thing around for a long time, they're probably going to be sweating. If you, it's one thing about being in, on SWAT is you have to be in good shape because wearing this for 12 to 14 hours can get very, very heavy. And sometimes we have standoffs or something like that with the negotiators that actually uh, take that long. So that's one good thing about working at the sheriff's office is it keeps you fit. This is our ballistic helmet that our SWAT team also wears. Um, if anybody plays Call of Duty or anything like that, you've probably seen something like this. Um, we have mounts for night vision as well as mounts on the sides. We can mount flashlights. We can even have cameras that will mount on this. So if we want to get a heads up video of exactly what the officer is looking at, we can actually mount cameras on here. Um, but they're, they cut up to the ears so it doesn't cover up your ears because one thing that's really important is communication amongst the SWAT team. We have to be able to talk to each other and uh, hear each other what we're saying. And so we wanted helmets that didn't cover up our ears. So that's really important for us. If, if you become a sheriff, do you have to get tasered? <laughs> so to carry a taser, you have to be tased. Um, because you don't, one of our uh, things is you don't ever want to do, any, do something to somebody that you don't already know how, the, how it's going to affect them. Um, speaking of taser, we have one. This is the uh, taser that all of our deputies uh, carry, and it has a, a red laser on it. I don't know if you can see a red laser, so we know exactly where we're shooting. And it goes for five seconds every time you pull the trigger. So, uh, and inside the cartridge that actually shoot out the probes, there are little confetti dots that have a number on them that match this taser and this cartridge. So every time a taser is deployed, we can collect up that evidence and see, well, this cartridge was fired, and then we can actually connect the taser to a computer and see how many times the triggers were pulled, uh, how long it was tased for, and that really helps us in court. So if somebody alleges, well, he tased me 10 times, well, the computer says that it only tased you once for five seconds. So it really helps protect us and really helps provide a lot of the truth that we need. If the officer with the canine dog, do they get to keep them at their house? Our canines do go home with their handlers. They keep them, they're with them 24 hours a day. They take them home, they live at home. Um, and, and that's a really good question. Uh, we do buy the food, the sheriff's office buys the food so they don't have to go out of their own pocket, but they do go home with them. All right, thank you very much for attending with us today and everyone have a good day, thank you.